In the previous video, I had outlined uh, the distance to default um, and then the probability of, uh, of default. Um, it should be noted that uh, n negative d2 is in option theory, it's understood to be the probability of being out of the money. So this is a phrase that's understood to mean that the value of the assets are less than the value of the exercise, which in this instance, because the exercise is the liabilities of the company, and negative and negative D2, it also should be read as the probability of of default. Okay, so change the text style here to text probability of default okay so but the question then arises can we parameterize do we have values for a l sigma and uh, the time horizon and how do we um, go about estimating uh, those or getting proxies for each of those types of value so if we um, set out this framework, how then do we estimate the probability of default? And a key difficulty that does arise is estimating, for instance, uh, the assets, the value of the assets, because the, while the liabilities are fixed and fixed over time, the liabilities of a company are the company's debts. So there are loans taken from banks. There are creditors who are owed money. They do not change um, at, in terms of uh, at a high frequency. They change. They change as debt is paid off, uh, as the bank uh, redeems its debts or issues new debt. Um, the value of changes, but it's not changing it's not in a constant state of flux whereas the value of the company's assets does change and change in a way that doesn't generally or cannot be generally be uh, reported um, in a way that can be captured by the um, company's accounts so a company may have quarterly balance sheets but the value of the assets change at a much higher frequency, whereas the value of the liabilities change at intervals, you know, uh, maybe, you know, over the course of three months, there may be a small amount of change in the company liabilities. Over the course of three months, the value of the assets change a lot, and there is a lot of flux that just cannot be captured as in terms of what's reported in the um, balance sheet in the company's um, financial statements. So how do we go about measuring uh, assets? And one of the approaches that has been, you know, that's embedded in the, the KMV model is that at f as a first approximation, we go back to option theory and we take, again, we look at the value of the, of the equity. And we know that equity is something that's directly observable because m most companies that we're interested in trade publicly. And there is, um, on the stock market every day, there are uh, the, sale of asset, the sale of stocks. However, we could deduce, I mean, if we look at this, we could say, Okay, let's take, well, first of all, let's change the phi to n just to reinforce these are normal cumulative probabilities and d1 and d2 are standard measures. We could isolate a for a moment. So let's take, copy, and then let's, okay, let's do this again. Let's copy, paste, let's take L, edit, copy. When we bring to the other side of the equal sign, it would become positive. So let's write, first of all, positive, and then paste, and remove 
this from this side. And then let's take this again and copy and try to isolate the value of the assets, which is clearly not going to be a problem. Let's take N here, N, copy. Let's take these values here and put over the divisor and paste. So if you like, A can be isolated to some degree. Now the value of the assets, we can't directly observe the value of the assets because the company's assets are in constant state of flux. The company's assets are made up of fixed, you know, fixed assets like equipment and then um, real estate and uh, some intellectual property and the value of patents. And we may put accounting values on those, but the accounting values reported are reported once, you know, every three months or so. So that the state of flux that these assets, asset prices in is cannot be co really covered by the snapshot presented in the balance sheet. But we do have directly observable market prices for equity. And we know that the assets is made up of equity and liabilities. And these values, if we reconfigure the, if we take the, the equity as an option and isolate that, then the assets in terms of everything else. So take everything else to the other side, equal signs here. We can say that the assets are equivalent to the uh, value of the stock plus the company's liabilities and then the other black shoulds um, measures can be incorporated in. So in the implementation of KMV Merton, typically there is a methodology that is set out where we deduce the value of the assets from a combination of the equity and liability. So we use this identity um, in setting out uh, the value of the asset prices. So the asset prices can be observed but indirectly and by using the stock market as a proxy in a sense for what's happening in the asset prices. The equity markets are updated every day and every minute and perhaps every second and if you have a very liquid stock the, asset pro the equity values are in constant state of flux and that can be reflected into the asset values if we work out or estimate the value of the assets using this construction. If we take as our first approximation that equity is in fact uh, an option and that's the Merton insight.